In today's video, I'm going to share with you some tips that you can use if you find yourself stuck with one of those very short layovers. Let's go. If you are traveling by air, you are most likely going to have a connecting flight. Sometimes I get lucky and I get a direct flight, but 90% of the time I am having to do a connection somewhere. And some of those connections get really, really short and I have to run for the plane. Yikes! Hey y'all, I'm Christy the Gen X Gypsy and my mission with this channel is to share with you tips and advice on how to live more adventurously in your midlife and beyond. Today we are talking about short connections or short layovers. And what I mean by a connection or a layover is when you are flying from point A to point B and you have to stop at point C in the middle, get off that plane, get on another plane, and then continue on to point B. That is what we are talking about is that, that middle part of your airplane trip. That can get a little dicey sometimes. Now these connections or layovers can be really long, but they can also be really short. And I've seen a lot of videos on how to deal with long layovers, but I thought it would be interesting to give you some advice on what you might be able to do to help alleviate yourself of uh, the rush and the stress of a short connection too. Now, sometimes you end up with a short connection because of how you booked your flight and the airline had no other options than for you to get a flight that left you with less than a half an hour or 45 minutes to get from one plane to the other plane in the terminal. And sometimes you end up with a short connection because of delays, whether that's weather delays or technical difficulty delays or whatever, and you end up where you thought you were gonna have an hour and a half layover and now it's been cut down to 20 or 30 minutes. Today, we are gonna go over the tips that you can use regardless of why you ended up with a short connection that you can use in order to help you navigate that situation and hopefully not miss your flight. So my first tip is with booking your ticket. And yes, I know, duh, like, you know, that seems pretty obvious, but for beginner travelers and maybe those who haven't traveled in a while, this might be new to you. When you are booking your airline ticket, try to make sure you have no less than 45 minutes for a layover domestically. And if you are traveling internationally, you need at least two hours, if not more, in order to get through security and get rechecked in for your next flight within that country. And I will go over the international connecting flights in a little bit later in this video. But for now, we're talking about domestic travel. You wanna make sure that your layover is no less than 45 minutes. When it gets shorter than that, you are running into some issues with possible delays making it a shorter time during your layover and it, it just gets a little dicey. So if at all possible, try to schedule your flights so you have at least a 45 minute layover. Now, if you are flying on the same airline and it's a shorter layover, it's a little bit more okay for a couple of different reasons. First, that airline knows that there are people coming in on certain planes that need to catch that next plane. So they automatically will start to adjust things for the people who are going to have those short connections. Second of all, most of the time, if you're flying on a particular airline, when you go to the place that is your layover destination, you will probably be in the same terminal because they usually put all of the same airline in the same terminal. So you may not have as far to go. Now there are some gigantic airports where that's not necessarily the case. Uh, Atlanta, for instance, especially for Delta Airlines, Chicago for United, that you there's a good possibility you might have to go to another terminal. But for the most part, you can usually be in the same terminal if you're flying on the same airline. If you are trying to book one of those super saver tickets online that goes with multiple different airlines for your full trip, you 
definitely need to make sure you don't have short connections because if you're not flying on the same airline, you are not guaranteed that they're gonna rebook you on another flight if you miss that flight. Meaning if you are flying on United Airlines to Atlanta, say, but then your next flight is a Spirit Airlines flight to Fort Lauderdale. Well, if you miss that Spirit Airlines flight because your connection was too short in Atlanta and you couldn't make it to your gate for Spirit, they just think you missed your flight. They aren't going to really take into consideration that your flight on the United Airlines was late. So I would really, really, really caution you on booking those multi-airline tickets if you have short connections. Make sure you have a really good cushion for those tickets. Otherwise, you might just have to pay out for another ticket and be out the money you would have spent to fly on one airline anyway. I personally only fly on one airline at a time. It just makes it easier to deal with issues that might come up during your trip, like delays or other potential problems. When you're dealing with one airline, it's just much simpler. Tip number two, when you're checking in online, if you know you're gonna have a short connection, check and see if you can get seats that are closer to the front of the airplane so you will be able to get off of the airplane faster. Now, I know a lot of times, not a lot of times, almost all the time now, airlines are charging you for closer seats, but if there's any way possible that you can get a seat closer or if you're willing to pay to have a closer seat, then I would take advantage of that opportunity to do that when you are checking in online. If you are unable to move your seats when you are checking in online, or if the only seats available are all ones that are, they wanna charge you $50 for, when you get to the airport, go to the counter, not, not your gate, the actual counter where you would check your bags in, go to the counter and ask them if they can move you up and explain the situation with the short connection. A lot of times they will find space and if some of those more expensive seats haven't been taken, they will go ahead and move you into that without charging you. It's one of those situations where it never hurts to ask, right? And if the counter agent isn't able to help you, definitely ask the gate agent if they have anything that's closer when you get to the gate. It's in the airline's best interest for you not to miss the flight anyway, because they're gonna have to deal with you one way or another if you miss your next flight because of their connection. So it's worth asking about. Tip number three, download your airline's app. Here you'll be able to check and see if there've been any changes made to your gate or your boarding time, Oftentimes, when you take off on your first flight, they haven't even assigned a gate for your second flight. So you're gonna wanna know where that location is going to be before you land. So as soon as you are able to turn your phone back on when you are landing at your layover destination, pull up your app and see if you can find out where your gate is and if the boarding time is still the same. On that app, you will also be able to see what gate your plane is coming in at. So you will be able to know where you're arriving at and where you need to get to. And that leads me to tip number four, and that is to take a screenshot of the airport map for your layover destination. You want to have a screenshot of it just in case you're not able to get Wi-Fi and data services, you can look at it on your phone. And if you know both of your gates, the gate you're coming into and the gate you're going to, you can look that up on the map and figure out your route before you ever get off of the plane. And hopefully you won't have to make a run for it. If you're enjoying this video, if you could click that like button and maybe subscribe if you haven't had a chance to yet, it does make a difference and thank you. Tip number five, let the flight attendant or attendants know that you have a really tight connection. They may be able to move you to a seat that is closer to the front or at the very least, they can share with you if the other airplane knows that you are on the plane coming in and whether that plane is going to be waiting for you or not. They may even be able to assist you in getting onto another flight if they know that you are going to miss your original flight because of the connection. Now let's take a minute to talk about international flights. If you are flying to or through another country, 
you will need extra time for your layover. And I would say no less than two and a half hours. A lot of people say two hours, but there are some places that it takes more than two hours to get through all of the customs and security that you have to go through, plus then make it to your next gate. It, it can be a little bit stressful if you cut it too short. When I was living in Nicaragua and I would fly back to the States, I almost always flew through Miami and I would have a layover in Miami to either take my flight back to North Carolina or a flight to Oregon. So I had to go through the process of going through customs and getting my bags out and rechecking everything. Now I have global entry, so my process is a little shorter because I get to bypass all of the passport checks that takes so long and I can, I mean, it's literally a five minute process for me to go through the passport check part of customs. However, you still have to go and pick up your checked bags and then take your checked bags back over to another section and recheck your bags for your domestic flights. Then not only do you have to recheck your checked bags, you will have to then go back through security with your personal belongings and everything before you can get back to the gates that will take you to the airplane where you will continue on to your destination. So just be aware that there is a much bigger process than just having your passport checked when you are doing a layover or a connection between an international location and a domestic location or two international locations. One time we flew from uh, Oregon to Paris, but we went through Canada. So we had to do uh, passport security checks in Canada and in Paris, and then coming back the same thing in Canada and again in the United States. So it was a good thing that we actually had longer layovers in our locations in Canada because it took a while. And we had one time coming back from Peru through Houston, there was 15 of us in our group and we all almost missed our flight to Oregon from Houston because the security line took so long. So just make sure that you pad that connection with a good amount of time, especially if you're going through a larger airport that tends to have a lot of international travelers. Now these last two tips are really more for your own comfort and not necessarily going to assist in avoiding uh, issues with a short connection. And the first one is to pack your own food. So that way, if you think that you're gonna be able to grab dinner or a snack or something during your layover and something happens with a delay or whatever, and you end up with no time between your planes and then you're starving because maybe the plane you're on doesn't have any food or all they have is snacks or they wanna charge you $20 for a cheese and crackers tray, whatever the case may be, I definitely recommend carrying your own food with you. Now it doesn't have to be anything extravagant, throw in a couple of protein bars or, you know, carrots with hummus or something like that, you know, that's easy to pack a sandwich. A peanut butter and jelly sandwich can go a long way, you guys. It is still to this day one of my favorite foods and, you know, I'm 53 years old. Just saying. But pack your own food, that way you're not stressed if you get somewhere and you're not able to find something to eat or be able to stand in line to get something to eat before you get on your next flight. And the bonus there is you won't be paying ridiculous airport or airplane prices for food. So it's a win-win. And the second comfort tip is to use the bathroom on the plane that is incoming to your layover destination. As you're getting ready to arrive at your connecting airport, go ahead and take an opportunity to use the restroom on the plane so you won't be stressed that you need to use the bathroom in the airport and might miss your plane because of that. Yes, I know in previous videos, I have talked about how I'm not a big fan of airplane potties, but you know, they're a necessity at times and I would highly encourage you to go ahead and use it before you land so that you aren't feeling that added pressure while you're trying to run through the airport and catch your flight. <laughs> Do you have any other suggestions on how to manage a short connection? 
let me know in the comments below. I know the community would appreciate it. If you're interested in my missed flight story, check out this video next. Have a great day and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.